Yeah, I think there was a lot of people who say, well, where are the stakes in this? Like, there's a grandmother, and she's Chinese. Uh, how are people going to relate to this? And also, she's in her 80s. Like, she's going to die at some point, no matter what. Like, what are the stakes? And that was really hard to hear, because for me, my grandmother dying, like, the world is ending. Yet Hollywood doesn't somehow, like, doesn't see that as stakes. And it wasn't until I did the story for This American Life where for them, because there isn't so much risk uh, and they are able to just tell the stories that they're connected to and they did it so fast and it was just so pure in the storytelling that it was the first time in my life that I actually even got to experience what it's like to tell a story in my voice. And then I went to have dinner with my best friend at a sushi restaurant in New York City and we were, I was sitting at the sushi bar and I just started crying. And he's like, you just did this amazing thing. Why are you crying? And I said, because I've seen it, like I felt it, like I've. This is the first time I felt connected to my voice and my story, and and this, and my, you know, somebody allowed me to tell my story, and I'm never gonna have that again because I work in the film industry, and I think that I'm on the wrong path, and what am I doing, and. And, you know, I had this, this like, breakdown. You know, we finished post uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was back in the same sushi restaurant, sitting at the sushi bar with the same best friend, and he said, do you remember a year ago when you were here, like, crying because you thought you would never feel, uh, be able to, like, tell an authentic story in your voice ever again? Do you feel that you've done that? And it just, like, made me so emotional because I thought about it, and I said, yeah, I do, and I feel like I had the same kind of support from my producers on this film as I did with This American Life, where they really, really um, supported and helped guide my voice. I feel really excited because uh, of Crazy Rich Asians. Like, very, very, very excited, because, <clears throat> yes, we did make this film before, the release of that film, um, and you know, at the time, no one knew how it was going to do. Now, being on the other side of it, you know, it's so exciting because maybe I'll get some money for my next film. You know, <laughs> maybe finally, like, someone will give me some money to make something. But you know, kind of my philosophy has always been like a very boots bootstrap, you know, DIY, uh, you know, method of, of filmmaking, and it just comes out of uh, you know necessity. You know, it's always been as an actor. I've always felt like I can't, I'm not getting written the right roles or, you know, I remember specifically one time I was at a, uh, you know, on a show and, and I, all I did was I tried to make a suggestion because they were having trouble blocking the scene and I got yelled at really bad. You know, they said, what, what, what is your job? And I, I said, uh, I'm an actor. Exactly. <laughs> so, you act, I direct. Shut up. You know, and it was just, I was like, you know what, motherfucker? I'm gonna go direct a movie and I'm gonna fucking do it better than you, you know? But, but you know, I, uh, I'm excited because now maybe filmmakers like myself, there's, there's obviously with like Lulu and The Sale and Late Night and all these, all these tremendous movies, maybe there's an opening for me now that I can, I can actually, you know, make a, make a case that it's monetarily, you know, makes sense. There's such a wealth of, you know, things that I haven't seen before and, you know, that, that should be made. And so The Farewell felt like one of them. I felt like it was so daring um, to do this experiment of what if we made an American independent film that was 65%, 70%, 75 in Mandarin. Like, our number keeps changing, but now that it's out in the world, it is mostly in Mandarin. But you know, to our wildest dreams, you know, what our hope was and that audiences are responding to is that it didn't feel like it. You know, we're living at a time where people just, people read all the time on their phone, people are watching Netflix and subtitles and, you know, those kind of boundaries are, I think, gone. Um, and so it just allows for a lot of different experimentation with the form that I think is getting really validated at this festival, right? And I think will continue to be so, you know, the, the bravery that goes into, you know, putting the passion, you know, as you guys, as filmmakers, directors, into um, something that you're, you're you, you know that at the end of it, people will see it and understand, but before that, it really just takes people to imagine it and take that risk. Um, and I have a lot of fun imagining things, so, <laughs> so far, so far, so good. Okay.